India is enforcing new rules that affect popular online platforms such as Netflix and Amazon and social media companies like Facebook and Twitter. The rules allow for greater government oversight of content on these platforms and make them liable for any content deemed harmful. But critics argue these will have a chilling impact on a constitutional guarantee of freedom of expression and also privacy. Welcome to the Desh Bhakt on... Akash Banerjee is one of India's most popular YouTubers and a leading voice when it comes to political satire. In the online space, he is thriving as a content creator for a young digital audience. He started his YouTube channel called The Desh Bhakt or The Patriot to talk about social and political issues. Over the years, he has built up a team and a strong presence on all social media platforms. Banerjee says the digital landscape has given independent voices, like his own, a free space to express themselves on a wide range of issues. But now, he is alarmed. The Indian government recently announced a new set of information technology rules. It can now more strictly regulate social media content digital news and streaming giants such as Netflix. These platforms are expected to regulate themselves more and also set up a system to address complaints about their content. The government says it wants to prevent what it calls the misuse of these platforms. I completely agree that news can be misused. Uh, it could create two law and order problems and there should be a set of guidelines uh, for people who are doing news on social media. I completely understand that. But why were the wordings left so convoluted? Why is it that it has been left so open-ended that anybody who is a commentator, who makes a video on published information also, is liable to these rules and regulations? So it is about controlling the narrative of what people are talking about. Nikhil Power, a digital rights activist and news editor, shares these concerns. He says existing laws already apply to the digital space and that the government is just trying to crack down on content it doesn't like. The most important aspect of these regulations is the imposition of a particular section in the Indian Information Technology Act which allows the government of India to issue orders to censor content. So they can block certain content for news and current affairs entities which they did not have the power to do before these rules came about. But there are others who have welcomed these rules. Venture capitalist Mohandas Pai says these regulations are the need of the hour to break what he calls the tyranny of digital giants and to protect users. If you look at social media today, there are very powerful digital monopolies. If you look at digital news media, many of them have an ideological stand. They publish defamatory articles, they publish fake narratives, etc. And where are the traditional media are subject to government control or rules, digital media are not. Banerjee believes these rules give the government disproportionate powers and that now the digital space for creators like him is shrinking, even when it comes to content like satire. Satire is all about putting the facts, maybe rubbing people a little the wrong way. But unfortunately in India, sarcasm and satire is taken personally. So. Either we see ourselves drumming down our content, or we see ourselves fighting cases in courts, or we see ourselves spending some time in jail. Uh, but that's where we are headed. Banerjee says he will not stop making his show. But he knows that he could one day be in the line of fire for his content. Take care. Goodbye. For more on this, I'm joined from Delhi by Tanmay Singh. He's a lawyer for the non-profit Internet Freedom Foundation that advocates online freedom in India. Tanmay, the government says that these new laws are required to fight the spread of fake news, for example, or revenge pornography on the Internet. I mean, that sounds like a reasonable argument, doesn't it? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. And you're right, that is a reasonable argument. The stated objective uh, to fight fake news and um, revenge pornography and all of these things, um, that's absolutely perfectly fair and that's reasonable and we agree with the um, intentions here. Um, but we're concerned that the rules go far beyond that. And uh, they also end up regulating entities that don't have um, a lot to do with this, for example, OTT platforms, um, which are not necessarily uh, very closely connected with the rise of fake news or revenge pornography like Netflix or Prime. 
Uh, we'll speak about that in a minute, but then I'd like to focus on the first part of uh, the companies where this does apply. For example, social media companies. Now, India is a huge market for social media giants such as Facebook and Twitter, for example. Uh, how do these new rules impact uh, social media users of, say, Facebook in India? Right. Uh, so these rules, they, they give the government a much greater level of control over social media intermediaries like Facebook, um, Instagram, even WhatsApp than the government exercised before. Um, they, they give the government wide powers for issuing takedown orders, um, even more than was available with the government before. And in the event of um, these intermediaries not complying with the government's orders, they, they, there could be a range of punishments, um, including the intermediaries such as WhatsApp, uh, sorry, Facebook or Twitter, could be liable themselves for the content that's posted on um, these websites. Now, that's a very worrying development. Uh, because we expect and we, we're concerned that this will cause um, a chilling effect on fundamental rights to speech and expression and the access to information to the citizens of India. But shouldn't uh, these social media companies be responsible? Somebody has to be held accountable for any harmful content that does come onto these platforms, shouldn't they? So I absolutely agree with you there. Um, I think that absolutely it is necessary to combat um, fake news and a lot of things. But um, I think that a, that a balance needs to be struck between uh, taking down illegitimate um, forms of expression and protecting legitimate uh, forms of expression uh, and speech. Um, and we're concerned that these rules do not presently in, in, in their current form strike that balance um, appropriately. Do you have similar concerns for the OTT platforms, essentially the so-called over-the-top platforms, platforms that offer entertainment such as Amazon, Netflix, or online news portals, for example? Yes, absolutely. Um, we're going to put aside arguments relating to the constitutionality uh, of these rules and the manner in which these rules were um, passed um, by, by the government. Um, and we will focus for the moment just on the content of the rules themselves. Um, in the in the second half of the rules, they discuss the regulations um, relating to OTT platforms and digital news platforms. What these rules have done essentially is that they've created a three-tier um, oversight mechanism over the content that is posted on OTT platforms and on digital news media platforms, um, where the first tier is these platforms themselves will have a grievance redressal mechanism. And in the second tier, while it is framed as a self-regulatory mechanism, where... Um, where these entities will get together and they will form a self-regulatory body from amongst themselves. Um, the government exercises a great amount of control over the second tier uh, because the government is um, retains final approval over the appointments that are in this self-regulatory body. Uh, and in the third tier, it's the government itself. Uh, the third tier is an oversight mechanism committee which comprises of officers um, of various ministries of the central government and is headed by the Secretary of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. Now, what right. this 3 d mechanism that I've just described to you does is that it retains final um, approval and final say over what sort of con content can be or cannot be uh, hosted by OTT platforms such as Netflix and Prime or digital right. news media websites, um, which, which we think is, is very dangerous. Tanmay Singh, we'll leave it there for the time being, but thank you so much for joining us from Delhi. Thanks very much. Thank you for having me.